Oh boy, oh boy. Two forwards, two backwards. It's fine. As you were. They were big. Scan. It's always that one that always floats to the top that says that I suck. Oh boy, oh boy. Well, that was a really good way to wake up. I didn't even have my gloves on because I just came in to do a look. But when there's a head just poking out, I have to work fast. And guess what came behind that one? Three more. Two forwards, two backwards. So mama had quads. And they're beautiful. Now, the problem with this, you, I'm praying she will get up. She went down last night, so I moved her into the pen and I, she could barely walk to the pen, walk to the lambing pen. Uh, I treated her for pregnancy toxemia or milk fever or whatever. It just looks like maybe she was getting ready to lamb. But um, I don't know, just I'm praying that she hasn't gone down. She never went down at all before that. There's been no use down since that first one. So unless one was sitting on a nerve maybe and it anyway she's really wobbly in that back end again so the difference between this one and the other one is this one just went down she's really alert she's licking her babies and it's a timing thing like she hasn't been down for more than 10 hours now not even eight hours Okay, I got another set of lambs down here, I think it looks like. I saw this one in my camera. Hello, buddy. Your mummy's in the corner. Hello. Go see mom. Let's go see mom. Out. Hi, mom. Is this your baby too? Hello, little buddy. Hello, little buddy. Yeah. It's fine, as you were. Hopefully that's hers. Hopefully she doesn't forget it. Okay, I'm gonna take them down. I'm just giving them all a bottle. I've given this one, this one barely drank. Uh, this one drank about 100 mils. Ah, uh, 75, and this one's still drinking. His mom is still not getting up, so I have to treat her more calcium. Uh, why are you guys doing this to me? What, how old are you? Oh, you're not even, this one's a 20, uh, 14 you, I believe. You're not that old. Alright. You have lots. Here, you go there. Mommy will pick you off. Okay, let's give you some number four. Good babies. Can I give you some more? <laughs> Hello. You'll thank me later. Okay. Other than that, everybody's quieted up this morning. Here's my two from down the way. They look good. Hey, Mom. Hi, Ruby. How's my pretty girl today? Everybody looks happy. Did not look like that last night. It was chaos in here. Wasn't it? Yes, it was. Oh, yes. Hi, baby Sue. Hello. Where's your boy? I think I saw him over there. In the lamb pile. 
Is he socializing? Is he socializing? Hmm? So the only sure way to get a ewe to lamb is when you go to, to do a completely different job. Uh, I'm just setting up another lambing bottle baby pen on this side to hopefully free up some room over there for the actual ewes and the, and the lambs. And these guys don't need as much room yet. And they're not due till June. So I think I can give up, sacrifice some of their pen. So I was just working on that and I went back. There was a ewe just starting to lamb and uh, before I started this and I just went to check on her and of course that just the head was coming out and uh, so then it's kind of a race so I got it out and a sibling so let's go have a look-see-boo so here's the babies they were big a couple big Suffolk lambs they're so cute don't run away your mom has lots of milk so all is good and it looks like there's another one landing at the back just starting she's starting to make some noise so i'll have to keep my eye on her another one on deck right there <laughs> just for confirmation So I will just be watching her. I'd like to keep working on that bottle baby pen. I think she's just starting. She's still over this charge. Soon. You know, uh, it's moments like these that, yes, I've had a, a few struggles at the beginning of this lambing and even still, apparently that uh, all the planning in the world, all the treatment in the world, just sometimes, you know, you just keep a you one year too long and you don't know when you're breeding her. She seems sound and good. Uh, and, you know, I think I've been caught a few times this slamming with, you know, two or three ewes that might have just been maybe too old to get through. And the problem with some of these older ewes, they're so productive. Like, and she still has a ton of condition, but it's just taking too much out of these views. And I know I'm sharing this with you guys. I know I'm getting flack. I know you guys are watching this and saying that I'm ill-equipped and not experienced enough. And, you know, I've been doing this for, since 2012 and at least, four lambings a year. I used to be more like nine lambings a year. So uh, I'm not saying I'm an expert. I've always told people that watch this channel that you're learning with me because every lambing, every single you is so different. And But I do take those comments pretty personally and, and to heart. Those are the ones I see. It's not the hundreds of beautiful comments from from my actual the people that want to be here and support me it's always that one that always floats to the top that says that i suck and then i look around i'm like you know what i've only lost one lamb on my watch and that's because i put her with a mom because i let my heart kind of steer the vessel and not my head so uh sometimes i do have a big heart and the heart is what sometimes uh causes trouble. I can only show so much on a camera so there's a lot of the day you don't see because you're only seeing 20 minutes of my day and I'm working pretty hard. I've got help this time so I'm doing all the things that that I think most of you want me to do and uh, sometimes it's just not enough. Yeah I don't know what I'm trying to say. All I'm saying is that I'm trying really hard and uh, 
and I think it's paying off and I've seen a lot of lambings and I know it seems bad but only because I'm sharing it with you guys I could quite easily only show you the 99% good ones and you just think sheep farming was easy and what I want you to see are is that one or two percent that that sucks Anyway, that's my little ramble for the afternoon. I'm going to keep working over there to ensure my bottle babies stay alive and healthy and then keep an eye on that mama. And it is super windy. Holy, they're working fast. <laughs> Five minutes, guys. That's all it's been. Wow, good mom. If they just do this for the rest of the lambing, I'll be really happy wow okay we'll take the least little wins and it's up hello <laughs> just up and running a marathon already are ya All right, bonding. Well, in between lambings, I did manage to move all my bottle boobies that were on this side over to that side. So it's kind of a mess everywhere, as per usual with me. What do we think, you guys? Eventually, this will be one whole pen. But these guys are just a little bit younger, and until they're really strong on those nipples, uh, I'll just leave them on their own. Any new ones that have come in, I'm going to put in this small, narrow one, and then join them if they're not too distance, distant in ages. If they remain, like if I don't have any more to add to this for a while, um, then I might have to leave some bottle baby pens set up on that side. I'd like to not have to because I would like that to be my creep area. So they got it figured out. You like your new digs? Hey? <laughs> I'd say so. Mama had another one. Hello. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, are you done having babies? Can we move you now? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I hope this isn't gonna be boring. If it's too boring for you, you can skip skip ahead. I'm going to tag and record my lambs, so if you are interested in this, if you've seen my lambing before, any of my lambing vlogs, you've probably seen this, but I realized in the whole, I don't know how many days I've been doing this, 10 days, something like that, I haven't shown you any of the things that I'm doing when I'm not on camera. And part of it is tagging and recording all these lambs, which takes a long time when I have multiples. That's the one thing about having more than two lambs. It just takes a lot more. It takes more for feeding, it takes more for processing, uh, meaning recording. I'm doing yesterday's lambs right now. Uh, so I'll just show you my tools that I use. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scan their ear tag, or I'm gonna put in an ear tag first. I'm gonna put in an ear tag with the applicator. Okay, so I'm gonna do that first. And then I'm going to weigh the lamb with a fish scale with this. I'm gonna weigh the lamb. Uh, I'm gonna scan the tag and it's gonna just pop up on my Gallagher here. And then the weight, I'm gonna add the weight onto here, onto the session. And then I'm gonna give it a shot of selenium because our soils are low in selenium here in Ontario. So I give a lamb uh, about a quarter cc's of selenium. And then I will put an elastic on their tail. And then I will mark them based on what they are. So if it's a single, they get red. 
If it's a twin, they get green. If it's a triplet, they get a blue. And if it's a quad or more, they get orange. And for whatever reason, every group I use different colors and uh, not on purpose, just whatever I start with is what it ends up being for the group. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay. Okay, that lamb was 11.2 pounds. That's her ear tag that just got put in. Now I'm gonna change the life data. It was born, actually this one was born today. I don't usually do it the same day, but I am, I guess today, 13th. And the, the uh, sex was a female. The dam, so what I do with the dam, is I actually take the gun and scan her ear tag. There we go. And that will come up. That will come up there. And what I do is because I don't know who they are, I can't remember, right? Unless unless they're a Ruby. I go to pedigree. It's hard to do through my camera, sorry. And I know that this dam or this this dam was a Rito cross. IDF is just who her dam is getting bred to right now. But I know that her, I don't know who the mom's breed is, but I know that her dad was a Rito. So I'm just gonna call it a Rito cross. And then of course those guys are Suffolk. So, because I bred, because I bred this U with the Ile de France and the Suffolk, if they take on the Suffolk appearance, then I just say it's a Suffolk. So Rito Cross Suffolk is what I believe this U to be. So I'm going to put Suffolk as the sire, because I don't have a, like a single mating, single sire mating, I just have breed. And then for breed, I'm gonna put Rito Cross Suffolk. Rito Cross Suffolk, right here. Rito Cross Suffolk. Boom. And then I'm gonna page over. And here is, I keep track of what it is. So quad, sextuplet, triplet, twin, single, and it's a twin. Twin. And that is my lamb. It's got all the information that I just put in right there. So when I go to weigh this lamb at weaning time or whatever, uh, it will then pick up the next weight and subtract it from its like birth weight, current weight, and it gives me my average daily gains. So this is kind of how I keep track of stuff. So I'm gonna keep going. I forgot one thing. I forgot to uh, mark mom. This is the hard part if they move. Oh, nice. Good girl. And I do this. So when they are in the pen, or even when I can see them on my nest camera, I can kind of see who to keep an eye out for. If Chris is out here, I can say, hey, Carissa, go check on number two. Is she choking again, or is she having a seizure? And she can report back. This is that number two that everyone was concerned about. I've never seen her do it again. I have seen yous do something very similar when they're choking. So sometimes when they're eating and uh, they take too much, they they go back and they they do quite a bit of performing, but I think she's okay. 
I haven't seen her do it since, but I am definitely keeping an eye on her. Oh, and I forgot you guys. I did say hello to Billy for everybody. I went and saw him today, especially for you guys, but I didn't have my camera. I had my phone, um, and I just forgot to take footage, but he, I rest assured, he is good. He got some snuggles. I was having some auger issues over there, so I just wasn't in any frame of mind to do any videotaping of this. So, uh, so anyway, Billy says hi. five o'clock and Krissa comes in about an hour. I'm just gonna take my phone and just write a list on news I want her to check, bottles I want her to feed. I want her to feed those triplets one more time that are in the, uh, the lambing pens and decide which ones drink the best, which one drinks the best, and grab it and put it in the, uh, in the bottle baby pen for the machine and then she'll train those hardcore first thing in the morning. They'll be too full tonight to really get on it. Uh, but if she's got time tonight, which she will, uh, she usually does that. She usually takes the time and just trains lambs. What I told Mark today is I feel like it's filling the cracks. So where you'll find me really struggle is after about a week, 10 days, 12 days of lambing, um, you know, I'll give up on those triplets and just leave them with mom because I don't have time to be, you know, making sure yous are okay, newborns are drinking, newborns have colostrum, and then I forget about the triplets that are already like 30 hours old that have never seen a bottle. So that's where I really need Carissa to back me up and fill the cracks. So uh, she is always, whenever she has a free moment, she's always training those lambs on the machine. And this whole like passing the baton, me just saying, okay, check this one, this one, this one. I do all the pro all the recording and processing. And then from there, then she can do the, the training of the lambs. So it's collaboration, right? It's working together and she's really good at that. And I'm pretty good at at the observation part. And for me, because I'm getting up early, it's just, uh, I'm kind of brain dead. By four o'clock in the afternoon, I've worked a 12 hour day and I'm just like, Bleh. So nice to have her come in on those uh, after supper hours. I can, you know, do laundry, have a nap, have a rest, whatever it may be. And, uh, and it's, it's, let's face it, it's just a break. I'll see you tomorrow.